good morning everybody welcome to the current webinar where we will talk about the ZD ZU operating system also called firmware the firmware is the operating system that Anapac uses in their ZD and ZU pumps uh, during this webinar we will brief you about the features and benefits about this uh, program well as said, welcome everybody. We will show you quickly some webinar rules. Then we will go on to the features and benefits of this webinar. We will then open the line for questions and we will touch the topic what's next. Some webinar rules. If you happen to be in a car, please park your car and make sure that no accidents can happen. Um, <clears throat> during the webinar we will mute the phone so if you have any questions please write down your question and refer to the slide number where you had your question so that we can discuss that after we have opened the lines for questions this webinar will be muted during the presentation This is webinar number three and the content is firmware or in other words the operating system of the Anapac ZD ZU pumps. We will discuss the features and benefits, we will then go to the questions and we will have a topic what's next. For your information this webinar is being recorded for educational purposes so if you want to see it or review it once again visit the Anapac website and then you can listen again to this topic. ZD ZU features and benefits. Pump usage information is stored in the LCD. You can see there the running hours and cycle counts. There will be a low voltage warning and this low voltage warning is recorded so that you can review how long a pump has been running on low voltage. Furthermore, the pump offers a great feature being a self-diagnostic capability. The information in the pump can be displayed in six different languages. The languages are English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and German. There are additional plug and play options available. There is a customer specific software available on request. And we will also do the also topics. Startup procedure. Connect the pump to a suitable power supply. Yeah, this power supply can be a voltage ranging from 115 volts one phase up to 575 volts three phase. Depending the type of motor, this can be a 50 or 60 hertz motor. During the startup, the screen will show you the following information. Being the firmware number. The firmware number is the version of our firmware being <coughs> like what you have with your computer, Windows or iOS. It will show us a model number. This model number will tell the electronics what type of valve is on the pump and at the moment there are 10 different models available. Then it will show you the motor type. Here we can see what type of motor is used on the pump. We have a one phase, three phase and a universal ZU motor option. Then the last one shown on the display is the pressure port. Depending the pump model number, the LCD will show either press port A or B. If the pressure transducer option is factory installed, it will always be in the A port except for bolting pumps which have the pressure transducer installed in the GP port. Just a little video to show you how the startup looks like in reality. When we connect the pump to the power it will show you the firmware, the model number, the motor type and the uh, possibility if the pressure transducer is in the A or B port. Once booted up it will show ready and depending the setup it will show bar or PSI whatever unit has been uh, selected. The pump software firmware is now up and running. Depending on 
pump settings, the screen could look like auto with PSI or local with PSI or it could be simply the word ready. <coughs> Recorded information in the LCD. There is the pump motor operating hours. This shows you the time the motor has been running. This can be used for example for a service interval. It will show pump motor operating hours at low voltage. The time recorded in the system tells you how long the pump has been running at low voltage. Low voltage will be that the voltage drops between 80 to 65% of the nominal voltage. If the voltage drops below 65% of the nominal value, then the pump will shut down to protect the electronic components. Another option shown in the display is the valve hours or cycles that the valve has been operated. Yeah, so it tells you how many cycles the valve has made in advance or how many hours it has been used in advance or it can show you the valve hours in retract or the cycles it has been made in retract. Built into the firmware there is a great feature called the pendant diagnose. This diagnose mode allows you to check your pendant for possible problems. In the next video we will show you how this looks like in reality. As you can see on the screen the buttons on the pendant and on the LCD on the yellow box are more or less the same. We have the motor on, motor on. We have the advance button, the advance, retract and retract. With the menu button I can then go to pendant or other words diagnose. While pushing the buttons a zero will go into a one. This means that the connection is there so this is not causing us the problem. We can do that with the advance and retract button and as long as we see a zero changing into a one we know that the pendant is functioning. Built into the firmware there is the local on off function. In the next video we will demonstrate this new unique feature to you. When we have the pump we have the pendant and we have the LCD. Now, When we look at the LCD and the pendant we see again the same buttons. If we did the pendant diagnose mode and we figured out that the pendant was no longer working we can now exclude the pendant from the system. How can we do this? We have to push the menu button and we are going to the following setting. As you see standard is programmed as local off. That means that the, the LCD screen is disconnected from the system and I can only operate via the pendant. If I now switch it on I'm disconnecting the pendant and now I have to work from LCD screen. Yeah. What is the benefit of this? If there is a problem with the pendant you have a second option to continue the work, no delay and after you have finished the job you can bring your pump to an authorized service center for a diagnose why the pendant failed. Pump options requiring an electric box. The first option we can offer is the heat exchanger. Yeah, the heat exchanger is there to cool the oil Due to the heat exchanger the pump runs cooler resulting in a longer uptime on the application. Then we have the feature oil level temperature switch. The oil level temperature will switch will stop the pump if the oil level becomes too low or if the temperature from the oil rises above 80 degrees. This oil level temperature switch is not available on 4 and 8 liter tanks due to the tank design. Then we have the pressure transducer. The pressure transducer in combination with the LCD display creates a digital gauge. The next option we have is the foot switch. 
the foot switch replaces the pendant and creates a hand-free system. The e-box is ready for configurable options and accessories. Yeah. So in other words, the holes are available to plug in one or more of the configurable options. When you remove the cover with the integrated LCD screen, you can access the circuit board. The circuit board has integrated terminals for additional options and accessories. So this is really a plug and play system. Included on the pump circuit boards are system control LEDs. The built-in LEDs assist the authorized service center to quickly identify electrical faults. Auto mode on ZD, ZU pumps with electric boxes. Auto mode will only work in combination with a pressure transducer. The auto mode allows the user to set a max pressure or a combined max and min pressure. What does this mean? If I select high pressure, this feature allows the operator to set a high pressure. By activating the pump, the pressure will build up and it will stop at the set pressure point. For example, this can be helpful if you are doing crimping or pressing applications. Or available in the firmware is the great feature high and low pressure. This feature allows the operator to set a pressure span. Activating the pump it will start to build the pressure and stops at the set high pressure. The screen will now start to blink and this tells you that it is in the auto mode. So it is currently controlling the pressure setting. When the pressure drops and it will come to the low setting, the pump will start automatically and it will bring the pressure back to the max set pressure point. In this video, the pump is already in the auto mode, uh, showing zero bar. As we said in the text, it will only work if we have a pump with a pressure transducer and an LCD. By touching the menu button, we can go to units. Here we can select the different units of measure. Uh, in this case, we select bar. By again pushing the menu button, we can now with the arrow up or arrow down button activate the auto mode modus or we can switch it off. In this case we leave it on. When you push the menu button once again you can now set your high pressure. In this case we have selected 600 bar. With the arrow up or down you can make the pressure higher or lower. By hitting the menu button once again I can now set my low pressure and with the arrow down, for example, we can set the pressure to, for example, 456 bar. If I now push the menu button, I have set the pressure span. And when I now start the pump, the pump will go automatically to the high pressure setting. And if the pressure drops, it will go down to the low value and the pump will automatically start again and bring the pressure up to the max pressure we have set. The ZE ZU torque pumps. Auto mode is standard on all our ZU and ZE torque wrench pumps. The auto mode allows the user to achieve an accurate torque setting in combination with your Anapac torque wrench. With the auto mode on, the operator only needs to keep the advance button pressed the torque wrench will automatically advance and retract till it reaches the set torque value. Auto mode will give a significant time win over a manual process where the operator needs to activate the, both the advance and retract button till they reach the required torque value. We will now go to the did you know section. You need to add the T option to your standard ZU ZD pump to get pressure reading on your LCD. The pressure transducer is not standard on the pump, so that's why we highlight this. With firmware 6.8 or higher, pressure transducer calibration is automatic. There is a calibration routine standard in the software required for firmware versions with a lower number. In the control box, there is a 
there is the facility to connect a filter pressure transducer. This filter pressure transducer is not sold by Anapac, but once connected, it will give the filter warning in the LCD if it gets clogged. Your local Anapac authorized service center can upgrade your firmware at request. Yeah, this will give you other functionalities that might not be in your older firmware version. During pump startup, do not touch the buttons. The screen could then display button fault. If this happens, you have to disconnect the pump from the electric supply to reset the control system. Special firmware programs can be made available on request. Contact the nearest Anapac distributor and they will inform you about all the possibilities. Serviceability. The serviceability feature includes an optimum optimized design. This allows hassle-free servicing. We have a whole range of optimized standard repair kits available for you. Full service training globally available through the Anapac Academy. On the slide you can see where all our academies are located. We have an academy in the United States, the Netherlands, Italy, India, Singapore and Australia. All these academies can assist you if having technical issues. Questions and answers. We will now unmute the line so the line is now open for questions. If you look at this presentation after we have broadcasted it and there are still questions, please send your question to the email address shown on this slide.